Welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church here in Venice, Florida. We are so happy that you have joined us for worship this day. We are going to be celebrating Holy Eucharist from the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. And let us pray the colic for St. Mark's Church. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, Look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for St. Mark's, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey! 
Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to, 
to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I've always thought how terrible it would be if during the course of my sermon people would start to get up and walk out of the church. I don't have to worry about that much today. Last Thursday, a scarcely noted event occurred. I couldn't find any notice of it in the newspaper, nor was there a single word mentioned on the news at 6 and 11. Last Thursday, God in Christ Jesus left this earth. The only notice I could find, I found in the Gospels, Jesus' ascension took place 40 days after the resurrection and 10 days shy of the great celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. For 10 days, it would appear, the earth was without God, a harrowing experience akin to that time from the dark Friday afternoon until the early morning hours of the first day of the week. Jesus had never left his disciples before, at least not for any length of time, but he will be back. You wait and see, he will be back. For over 2,000 years, humankind has awaited and searched the heavens for any sign that the Christ was coming back. How many generations have gone to join Jesus in heaven in all that time? We moderns have come hardly to mark his ascension, because what has that to do really with me? After all, I'm still rooted here in terma firma for who knows how much longer. This is my real world. And we all share the difficulties of this present time, and God knows some more than others. These are indeed harrowing times, unprecedented times, and sometimes it is so difficult to see beyond tomorrow. But I'm here to tell you that God has not left us, never has, never will. His hand is, in ever, is ev his hand is ever in our time, in this time, in the now. I tend to believe Frederick Buckner's observation about life. 
It's particularly poignant, having been housebound for some time now. He writes, If you look at a window, you see fly specks and dust, the crack where Junior's frisbee hit it. If you look through a window, you see the world beyond. When we have our lives and our livelihood somewhat restricted, we tend to have our vision confined. We can't see very far. I know I sometimes tell you a story or two designed to capture your attention and to prove to you that God indeed has a sense of humor and he wants you to have one too. God loves to hear you laugh. But today, today I want you to hear a true story, a true story that took me completely by surprise. I was winding down an interim ministry. The new rector had just begun and I was asked to stay on for a little longer to help the new priest get settled in. On this Sunday, while folks were gathering before service, a young man walked in, got a cup of coffee and a Danish, and took a seat at a table by himself. I recognized him as a newcomer, so I went over to say hello. He was a pleasant-looking fellow, well-groomed in his early to mid-twenties, I would guess. The only thing that seemed different about him was his eyes. The pupils seemed to be somewhat dilated. My suspicion was that he was on some kind of meditation, medication, which he readily admitted to. I introduced myself and asked what I might call him. Without hesitation, he said, I am the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now in that parish, they had the regrettable practice at the announcement time of inviting visitors and newcomers to stand, tell us your name and where you're from. Since it was generally a modest congregation in size, visitors tended to be obvious. I suppose I should have considered the possibility, but I didn't. And when the young man was invited to stand, you know what happened. I am the second coming of Jesus Christ, he said, and I thank you all for coming to worship me and my father. And he sat down. <clears throat> well, the new rector immediately announced the offertory sentences. The choir jumped up and began the anthem, and the ushers started passing the plates. I have to say, that was a first for me. But what if, what if, on this Sunday after the Ascension, what Jesus do we continue to search for? What visage do we look for? Was Jesus tall or average, dark-skinned or fair? Was he big-boned or slight? What was the color of his hair, his eyes? Go ahead, search the Gospels. Nowhere, nowhere <clears throat> will you find a description of Jesus' appearance. I wonder why that is. I wonder. If Jesus appeared right now, how would he look? Oh, he would probably stop in the vesting room and put on one of these silly things so that we would recognize him. Or did I see him when he was bathing the bodies of the dead and dying in India 
with the Sisters of Charity, where overhead of the pool was the sign, the body of Christ. Perhaps he was hiding behind that very used face mask and the torn paper gown because there was no other. Is that him over there on the respirator? Or is she waiting on that long line to get the test for the virus? Is that him over there in that long line? Where has Jesus gone? Where is he? Maybe he's over there with those hungry little kids hoping for a little milk to put on their dry cereal. Where did Jesus go when he left here? Where is he, the woman asked on Easter day. Madam, the angel replied, he is loose in the world. Now, seven weeks later, we know that that is true because we have seen his hand at work. Jesus the Christ, he is out there in the world and in the hearts of his faithful people. He's there in the desperate disguise of the poor, in the hands of the healers, in the kindness of your neighbor, in the faithfulness of your friends, in the embrace of the lonely. Where did Jesus go last Thursday? St. Paul, I think, answers it best. Where no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor human heart conceived, God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. I miss you all and long to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Please join me in praying the prayers of the people following Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer to the Lord the sacrifice of our life and labors.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. But deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The God of peace, 
who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, in the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you today and remain with you always. Amen.